This video is part one of a two-part series which provides an example of how to use the Mile High Flood District's Detention Basin Design Workbook. My name is Derek Rapp and I'm going to walk you through an example of how to use the Basin Worksheet to develop a stage area volume relationship. This example will focus on the preliminary design of a full spectrum extended detention basin. I have opened a blank workbook and switched to the Basin Worksheet to start this example. I'm using version 4.03 released May 2020. Always make sure you have the most current version before starting a new project. The first step is to select the type of BMP you're designing from the pull-down list. For this example, we will be designing an extended detention basin. The BMP type selected will automatically populate several default input parameters within the worksheet. For example, the water quality capture volume drain time will be set to a default of 40 hours for an EDB, as shown here. Next, we need to provide the tributary watershed parameters required to run the Colorado Urban Hydrograph Procedure, or CUHP. These inputs include area, length, length to centroid, slope, and imperviousness. It should be noted that if you hover over an input cell, a comment will appear that helps describe the required input. In this example, we will look at a 20-acre watershed with an average slope of 2% and an imperviousness of 65%. We will also need to provide a breakdown of soil types in the watershed in order for the program to calculate the default Horton infiltration parameters, as well as the excess urban runoff volume. This watershed includes only type C and D soils. The last required input in this section is selecting the appropriate rainfall depths from NOAA Atlas 14. One of 45 different locations within the district can be selected from the pull-down list, and the corresponding one-hour rainfall depths for each recurrence interval will be determined. For this example, we are going to just stay with the default location at the Denver Capitol Building. You can see the one hour rainfall depths for each recurrence interval here. You also have the option to override the rainfall depths by manually entering the values over here. Once all of the required inputs have been provided above, we can move on to generating runoff hydrographs for the tributary watershed. With the click of a button, CUHP will run within this workbook and generate hydrographs for the tributary watershed input parameters. When we click on the Run CUHP button to generate the watershed hydrology, the Excel status bar in the lower left corner will indicate the current progress of the CUHP run. Once the CUHP code is finished, a message box will appear to indicate that CUHP has run successfully. The total runoff volume for each recurrence interval will then populate in these cells. The complete runoff hydrographs and peak flow results are presented on the outlet structure worksheet and will be discussed in part two of this example. We will also discuss the option of overriding the CUHP results when necessary. However, you can override the water quality capture volume or excess urban runoff volume here if the district criteria does not apply or the project varies from the typical application. Based on the calculated CUHP runoff volumes for each recurrence interval, approximate detention volumes are calculated using empirical equations. These results provide a starting point for sizing the basin geometry. These empirical equations can be seen on the reference sheet and more documentation can be found on the district website in the resource library. Now that the program has estimated the required storage volume for the detention basin based on the tributary watershed hydrology, it is time to define the storage zones you want to include in the design and then determine the preliminary basin geometry. In this example, we are going to design a full spectrum extended detention basin, which includes three zones made up of the water quality capture volume, the excess urban runoff volume, and the 100 year detention volume. The zones are configured like layers of a cake as seen in this image. Zone 1 in dark blue represents the water quality capture volume or first layer of the cake. Zone two in light blue represents the second layer of the cake, which is equal to the excess urban runoff volume minus the water quality capture volume. And zone three at the top represents the third layer of the cake, which is equal to the 100 year volume minus the excess urban runoff volume. Now we will select the storage volume for each zone from the pull down lists. At a minimum, you are required to select at least one storage zone. Never skip zones, always start with zone one and then move to zone two, regardless of the desired storage volume. For example, if you are designing only for the water quality capture volume and 100 year detention, these should be entered as zones 1 and 2 respectively. When I click on the zone 1 pull down list, you will see several design options. It should also be noted that a user defined option is available at the bottom of the list, which allows the user to override the volumes calculated above. In this full spectrum detention example, we are going to select water quality capture volume. When selected, the adjacent cell will populate with the water quality capture volume calculated above. Next, we will select Excess Urban Runoff Volume minus Zone 1 for Zone 2 pulldown. And then we will select 100 Year minus Zones 1 and 2 for the Zone 3 pulldown. 
As a check, we can see that the total detention basin volume when summing up all three zones is equal to the 100-year detention volume shown above. Now that we have defined the different zone volumes, we can move on to providing design constraints for the basin geometry. For an extended detention basin, we need to provide design constraints for the initial surcharge volume and the trickle channel. These inputs are not required for other BMP types. The initial surcharge volume defaults to 0.3% of the water quality capture volume. The recommended initial surcharge depth is 4 to 6 inches. In this example, we will use 4 inches, or 0.33 feet. The total available detention depth is defined from the bottom of the initial surcharge volume to the top of the 100-year detention volume. In this example, we will use 6 feet. We will include a trickle channel with a depth of a half foot and a slope of a half percent entered as feet per foot. We will also set the side slopes at 4 to 1 above the basin floor and shape the basin with a length to width ratio of 3 to 1. Once all of the required inputs have been provided, the program will automatically begin calculating the basin geometry necessary to satisfy the required storage volumes. It will then generate the full stage area volume relationship. A summary of the calculated basin geometry is provided below. As you can see, the calculated basin volume is equal to the estimated 100 year detention volume of 2 acre feet. You can look at the reference worksheet to get more detailed information regarding the basin geometry sizing equations and figures showing the preliminary basin configuration. The complete stage area volume calculation table with stage increments of hundredths of a foot is hidden at the bottom of the worksheet and can be viewed by clicking this button. However, a condensed stage area volume table at a default stage increment of tenths of a foot is shown on the main part of the worksheet, along with figures of the stage area volume relationship. At this point, you have completed the basin worksheet and are ready to move on to the outlet structure worksheet, which is covered in the part two video. That concludes part one of this example. You can now watch the part two video which continues the example on the outlet structure worksheet.